You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Do you like to talk? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Do you like to listen? I do like to listen. So, there we go. There we go. <laughs> we have an opportunity for you if you like to talk and more so if you like to listen as well. We have a great opportunity for you today. Thanks to, Con- we already said thanks to Concordia, didn't we? We did. And well, I'll say thanks again. Thanks to Concordia <laughs> University, Wisconsin. We love you. Um, in studio today, Erin Alter. She's director of short-term mission program for LCMS Office of International Mission. You might also know her from the Lutheran Ladies Lounge as well. Yes. Good morning, Erin. Good morning. And you brought along a friend today, although she's not here in studio, connecting with us remotely, Stephanie Hufflin, Deaconess Intern for LCMS Office of International Mission. Stephanie, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you. Well, we are excited to learn about this English Conversation Partners. Yes. Did I get that right? You did. Because we like to talk. We Everyone likes to talk. And this... This is a great opportunity to serve internationally without actually having to leave your home. It's a great way to actually be part of the the work that's happening internationally directly and, you know, interact with people. But you get to do it all online. A number of our missionaries around the world have uh, English conversation classes where it's one of their one of their ways that they offer to the community to connect and interact with people that allows them to build relationships with people and then more of that ministry happens there but as part of those english conversation classes you need someone to actually converse with so <laughs> We can provide some of those conversation partners via Zoom, and we're looking for volunteers to join up for the next session that's going to be starting in January, and it's a pretty low commitment sort of opportunity, but it does give you a chance to actually directly participate in the mission work that's happening in a number of countries. So tell us about the past English conversation partner opportunities. Like how, where in the world can you actually serve from your couch? Mm. Well, for this one, you can serve in Canada, Puerto Rico. So warm. You'd have to turn up the heat to really give yourself (laughs) that sense. Or the Czech Republic. Uh (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, those are and those are actually the three places I think that have been consistently offering these opportunities over the past several months, almost actually more than a year now, which is cool. That is cool. Now, Stephanie, you've previously served as an English conversation partner. Can you tell us about your experience? Sure. I've been working just with the Puerto Rico group, kind of coming back and getting more familiar with it. I started because I have always thought about missions and how cool it would be and then got incredibly awkward and just knowing myself I knew I would never become like a career missionary so how could I support missionaries right so I've been praying for them and giving donations and things like that so when this popped up I was like I can actually be a missionary you know like not a real missionary but I can participate and so it was a way for me to get involved and get over some of my awkwardness and the <laughs> nice thing was you meet other awkward people and they're trying to speak English <laughs> and you're trying to find words to speak back. And so there's all this great awkwardness, at least that's what my first session was like. And then you get more comfortable and more comfortable and you form a kind of relationships and you get to know each other. And the conversations sometimes go kind of deep and they're just really good. It was a great experience. You mentioned the awkwardness that yeah. everyone experiences, whether you're the native English speaker or the the English conversation partner learning English, it can be awkward for everybody. What value is there in just <laughs> acknowledging that awkwardness up front? Is there value in that, Stephanie? Oh, absolutely. Especially, I mean, I did say to the first um, people that I met with was a mother couple. So it was a mom and a teen daughter. And they both really... we. Well, all three of us struggled to just communicate. So we just, I mean, just to admit it to them and say, I'm sorry, I'm struggling with this. And then everybody kind of smiles and you're at ease. 
and you help each other out. So it's actually very helpful on both sides. Erin, do you have other stories of participants in the past, uh, feedback from people who have participated? Let me think a moment. Yes, but not that I'm going to come up with, so we'll, we'll I ha- strike that one. <laughs> I, have, I have some in front <laughs> of me. A, yeah, Stephanie wrote okay. an article recently, so you probably have the actual feedback handy. I yeah, Stephanie, a, do you have, do you yeah, have stories just, of, of past participants? I just have a couple here. So I know that some of the people that have participated on different teams have different experiences, but many people have said that the value of encouraging the other person is very valuable and then also leading them into a faith conversation has even more value. So as they're talking to the person, they're looking for opportunities to share the gospel or to even find common ground. Um, If the other person is coming to it and they're not a Christian and they really have no interest, um, to find common ground on things like forgiveness or helping others, then you you find a way to work that into the conversation. And then you can bring in some of your theology, some of your Christian ideas, and you can be a witness to them. And even if they don't go down that, that path of faith, they at least get a really good impression of, hey, this is what Christians are. They're friendly, they're willing to talk, and they're not so bad. So it's a, it's a way to also expose them to Christians in a non-threatening way. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, if you're, if you're sort of thinking about this and you're like, ugh, I feel like you might, I might really struggle with how I would come up with ways to work that into the conversation. The nice thing is the, the missionaries who are hosting this, they do help give some of those prompts so that you don't necessarily have to think of it yourself. They're like, why don't you spend some time today talking about this? They give you some, they give you some guidance on that. So it's not totally on your own. If you enjoy that sort of thing, it'll come naturally to you. But if you're someone who is like, oh, I don't know about that. They do give you some helpful, helpful guidance to sort of move the conversation in that direction. Who would be ideal for this? Who who should consider applying and serving as an English conversation partner? Erin? Well, we the ideal person would be an LCMS Lutheran who is at least 14 years old and can speak English, which really includes almost all of the LCMS Lutherans. I mean, most of us speak English. So yeah, that's, 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 oh, and you do actually, this is key. Sorry, I've, I should have remembered this. You do actually need a solid internet connection because <laughs> um, that is important. It is, it is by Zoom. So you get to actually see the person that you're talking with, but because of that, you do need solid internet. So, yeah. Are there any other things people should know as they're considering signing up for this if they're a person that is over 14 and an LCMS member and they have a solid <laughs> internet connection? <laughs> what are the other yeah. the other logistical things that go into yeah. this? So there program? is there is a little bit of an application process. We have people, there's an application form you fill out online, then we'll ask you to complete a background check. And also we collect a reference from your pastor. So That'll, those are the the two sort of pieces that we do as far as vetting goes for for this particular opportunity. Stephanie, what are some things that, uh, maybe just one or two things that you've learned from being an English conversation partner? I have learned that I can actually talk to people and not be, <laughs> and not be awkward all the time. As I started talking to some of these people, they would also ask me questions back and then we would keep going. So I I learned some more skills, I guess, for uh, reaching out to people. And I've always been a little bit timid with witnessing outright. I've seen other people do it so skillfully that sometimes I'm just not that bold. So I've, I've learned for myself how to be a subtle witness that is in my comfort zone. And I've also learned how to get outside my comfort zone. This isn't too threatening, but having a conversation with somebody who doesn't speak exactly the same language or they're not proficient with it, it can make you a little uncomfortable. So it was a nice way to just get outside that comfort zone for a little bit. 
Do you have any advice or words of wisdom to people who are considering doing this maybe on the fence? What would you say to people who, who you think should should engage in this opportunity? I think something that might hold people back is that they think they need to be a teacher. And mm. you don't. You don't. I mean, I've seen people in there that do it. There are a few times where we've had a few of us together in the same room. So it's not always one-on-one. It generally is. But if they have internet problems, then sometimes it's not. So I've seen different styles, but you don't have to be a teacher. You don't have to be um, a bold evangelist. You don't even have to have all the words. The mission teams give you so much support with that. And you can always ask for help during it. You can message them and they'll come into the room with you and help you out. So all those things that you think are barriers really aren't. Aaron, what are the details? What do we need to know with just about a minute? Go to servenow.lcms.org, and there you'll see the English Conversation Partners Winter Session, I think is what it's called there. Um, click on that opportunity, and there'll be an, a way you can say you're you're interested, and we'll get started. It'd be great to do this before Christmas so that come January, we can do all of the mm-hmm. follow-up and that sort of thing. So while you're sitting on Christmas break, go ahead and, and start that start that process now, and we'll get things going for so January. While you're enjoying your Christmas cookies, yes. pull out the laptop. Exactly. Servenow.lcms.org. Look for English Conversation Partners. Fill out your application there so that come January, when there are only a few Christmas cookies left, if any, <laughs> um, you have something else to 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 look forward to besides That's Christmas right. cookies. You can make that one of your resolutions in January, okay. and you'll be able to complete it almost immediately. There you go. Outstanding. Oh, yeah. Think how satisfying <laughs> it'll be. <laughs> Our guest today, Stephanie Hovland, Deaconess Intern for LCMS Office of International Missions. Stephanie, thanks so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. Thank you. Aaron Alter, Director, Short-Term Mission Program for LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour. It's a pleasure. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. 